Welcome to another edition of Chaplain John with Chaplain John Sayers, featuring special reports and interviews with people doing kingdom ministry in Tulare County and beyond. If you would like to be featured by Chaplain John, you can contact him at jnsayers at yahoo.com. And now, here's Chaplain John. Journey to Pentecost, or the Great 50 Days. I've been, this is the challenge I've been having, is to do uh, a sermon in six minutes or less, not counting the introduction. Well, I've been following, uh, really, the events of Jesus after his resurrection on these this special series. Um, tra- those that have experienced Jesus after his resurrection. And today, the today what I want to do, and this is what I've been doing all week at the jail, We've been reading, we read John chapter 19, uh, verses through 30. You can go back and read that. This is where Jesus finally appears to the disciples. Now, you can read about other events uh, earlier uh, where Jesus appeared to Mary, for example, the guys on the road to Emmaus. But now he's appearing to the disciples. And, and they're all present, except for Thomas. And I really want to focus in on Thomas for a minute. I mean, when the first, Jesus is always telling, he told us guys more than once, I'm going to leave, but I'm not going to abandon you. Stay together. I like this theme, stay in Jerusalem. Jerusalem for me isn't so much a place, but stay with believers. Stay in the body of Christ. Because Jesus said, I'm going to leave, but the Holy Spirit is going to come. So wait in Jerusalem. Well, they're all present, except Thomas is not. And when you read this, you, we tend to forget that uh, there are, you know, Jesus appears to them. You can read about that. They're excited. They see Jesus. And then they go get Thomas and they say, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. Well, you got to look at there as a gap there. I don't know. After Jesus said that, he left, I guess. And these guys are going, we need to go get Thomas. Thomas isn't with us. We got to go find him. And I don't know. Did it take him an hour, two hours, a day, two days? Was he in Jerusalem, the place, but not in the presence with the other guys? Well, they go find him and they say, Thomas, we've seen Jesus. He's, he's alive. And Thomas says, guys, I'm not going to believe unless I touch him and see him myself. Well, over the years, we've given Thomas, I think, a bad rap. We've given him a nickname called Doubting Thomas. Oh, you're a Doubting Thomas. I think Thomas is just being realistic. I think he's saying, guys... I can see your enthusiasm and excitement, but I'm not going to believe unless I see him myself. And Thomas is 100% right. You are not going to believe Jesus is real unless you see him, unless you touch him. And we can see him and touch him today. Well, they bring Thomas back. Boy, when I walk away from God, I hope people bring me back. And they, and they do. <laughs> Some of the people that have been bringing me back are the inmates right in this jail. <laughs> And they bring him back, and Thomas is with the disciples again. Eight days he's with them. And Jesus appears again. Oh, I like what he says. First time he said, peace be with me. He said that twice, peace be with you. And he says to Tom, he says to them, peace be with you. And then he says to Thomas, Thomas, come and touch me. Touch my wounds, touch my side. Be unbelieving no more. I don't think Jesus is upset with Thomas. I think Jesus is giving Thomas an invitation. I'm inviting you, Thomas, to know that I'm real. I don't know if Thomas touched him, but I know what Thomas says. He sees the resurrected Jesus. And he says, you're my Lord and you're my God. In biblical times, when you call somebody Lord, that meant they owned everything, even your very life. But he didn't just say Jesus was Lord. He says, You're my Lord and you're my God because Jesus is God. You say, son of God, but that's meaning God. It's term of divinity, the three in one, the triune God, God, Father, God, Son, God, the Holy Ghost. Well, Jesus says to uh, Thomas, Thomas, you believe because you've seen me, but blessed are to those who believe who have not seen me. I don't know. Was I 10, 12? I don't remember a little kid. When I heard that maybe the pastor was preaching on this, maybe I science school teacher was teaching it. But when Jesus said that over 2,000 years ago, I had this weird thought. Oh my gosh, when he was saying that to Thomas for the first time, somehow he was looking into the future and seeing me. 
little Johnny Sayers because I was thinking, man, I believe in Jesus, but I've not seen him the way Thomas has. I believe in Jesus, but I have not touched him the way Thomas has. I think he was looking at us today, those of us who have a relationship with Jesus. We have seen him. We have touched him. When I'm in Jerusalem, and when I'm with other believers, and I was there today with guys here, I, I was with Jesus. When I read scripture and, and, I, and I say, Lord, open me up, I see and touch Jesus. I could see the sunset and sunrise. I see and I touch Jesus. I, we see and touch him. I, in prayer, I see and touch Jesus. Man, even dwelling on this, I'm seeing and touching Jesus. See and touch Jesus today and be unbelieving no more. Hmm. Six minutes or less.